Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered! Today it's going to be another match between Flash and a Larva here on the map named Sparkle 0.99A. This replay is apparently from 2018 or 2019. And let's go ahead and see if Larva is going to go ahead and four pool Flash. Okay, so in the top position we have the white Zerga player, it's going to be Larva, and on the left side is going to be the yellow Terran player, Flash. Now, Flash has been playing StarCraft for a very, very long time. What the heck is this? A Kakaru, a hallucinated Kakaru. This map is amazing! There's hallucinated Kakarus flying around. Is it running out of energy too? Is it actually going to die? Because, oh my gosh, a hallucinated Kakaru is... I'm so distracted by this, you guys. It's not a quick pool here from Larva anyway. Ah, uh, don't fly into the darkness. Don't do it. Ah, uh, I wanted to see you. I wanted to see if you're going to expire. We got all these Bengalases down here. Just hanging out. Oh, he came back. Dude, he's he's running out. 12, 10. I'm, I'm just utterly transfixed by this hallucinated Kakaru that's flying around. <laughs> I think that answers a mystery for me. I think there was a time I saw something like that happen in a previous game, and I was like, what was that? There is no time for hallucinations yet. We don't have High Templar out, and that was correct. There weren't any out, but it might have been a hallucinated Kakaru. Got this other neutral lair over here. I have cast a game on this map before. It was uh, Last versus Rain. Bestify from BlizzCon 2018 that I cast on the channel. If you want to check that out, please do. It's one of the only Bestifies from Brood War that I have posted. I'll put a link to it in the top right. You can hang out and check it there. But I believe this is an island map. I believe Sparkle is an island map. That's what these cliffs are. That's why there's these bangalists on the edges. That's why this hatchery exists. Yeah, man. This is a weird map. Sparkle is very, very strange indeed. So it is going to be an island map. ZVT featuring Flash and Larva. I have had this requested from me before. Is this the right speed? Hang on. I'm going to speed it up a little bit. See if it got knocked down a little bit. Oh, maybe it did. Up, down. Up, up. So definitely too fast. Definitely too fast. Okay, I think we're at the right speed here. So there's your hatch coming up, and inside this little guy, this side disruptor, is a Vespine Geyser. If I remember correctly, there are little treasures hidden around this map. Stuff you have to kill that gives you access to other stuff. It's just, it's balance. It's for balance purposes. I think it's basically to make sure that you can't go quick two gas here and just go two base Muta as Zerg and really just wreck face with it. Because that's generally how this can work. This <laughs> How this can work in island maps with Zerg is two base Mutalisk. Uh, again, having two bases is really, really nice, but usually it's one base. I don't know, man. The, I'm trying to remember. The island maps that I used to play on were always just one base, which actually kind of stunk for Zerg that way. Couldn't get very many Mutas out on a single Vespian Geyser. But yeah, I'm pretty sure you knock that thing down and get another Gas Geyser here. Barracks is scouting on out, and we are starting a factory, so he doesn't care about Barracks. He's going to go things like Valkyries. Might see some Wraith harassment here. This is exciting. I like this a lot, and then this dealio, you kill that, and it gives you access to something else. I honestly, for the life of me, can't remember what it is, but it must be some kind of resources, because uh, uh, we are actually trying to kill these here, and a larva is throwing up hatchery right next to it. So there's your spawning pool, there's your extractor, you don't have to get your pool up very fast on an island map, because you can't get rushed, you can't get bunker rushed, you can't get SCV rushed, you can't get marine proxied. Nothing like that. So go ahead and drone to your heart's content here, Larva, with your APM of 398 or 89, depending on how you're looking at it, and about 400 extra here for Flash. Now, yeah, there are your starports, even the factories floating off at this point. He knows how important it is just to have factories, now, just to have starports, rather. He doesn't need the factory at this stage. He's going to scout with these buildings, see what he can see. It's really hard for Larva to deal with these. And still nothing, man. Larva is just droning up hard. He's making a couple Zerglings, which seems odd. I really don't know why he would make Lings at this stage. Hey, look, a real Kakaru. That was not hallucinated at all. A real Kakaru. So he's got some Lings. They're going to go ahead and knock down. Ah, I guess the Lings are here to knock down the side Disruptor. Fair enough. So that's what that exists for. Question answered and mystery solved. There's your lair. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, uh, Wraiths on the way. So two Wraiths on the way. Two Port Wraith 
Our opening here from Flash. This Marine's been working on this side disruptor forever. It has 2,000 hit points, though. It's going to take a while to knock that thing down with a Marine with no upgrades at all, especially. Side disruptor taking some shots here, too. No big deal. Drone, 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 drone. Uh, I don't actually see an answer to the rates is the problem. I don't see an evolution chamber. Hold on. No, didn't build anything. All right, well, fair enough then. I mean, rates take forever to build, apparently. They are incredibly forever to build. Hi there we go. Evolution chamber, hydrolisk den now on the way. So fine. Larva knows the timing. He knows the timing to rush to rates, and he might actually be okay. So creep colony coming up there. Evolution chamber is just about done. It's going to take some time to fly over here. And then our creep colony should be done. But actually, there's going to be a bit of a window here where Flash is going to be able to harass a tiny, tiny bit. That drone getting focused down is going to die. Take several shots from a Wraith to kill it. Overlord's getting shot up here, too. This is really good. This is a great opening. Just a quick Wraith opening. Not too bad of a deal at all. Then pulling back. And... Oh, there was a Ling hiding under that. Oh, then he lands the factory. Oh my gosh, this is amazing! And starts building vultures out of it. And marines out of it too! Woohoo! Oh, this is great! This is so good! I thought they would be just for scouting, but uh-uh. This is where we start seeing the stuff being built on Larva's base. He's got the couple of creep colonies. He's got uh, another one coming up here too. He's going to have hydrolisks, which are pretty great here. And yeah, the hiders are going to trade against the marines and against this vulture pretty darn well. But the vulture is fast and the hiders can't really catch him all that well. And actually, it's going to take a few shots to take down a drone. No big deal. But eventually, the vulture is going to get chased down and is going to get killed. He's not going to bother making a sunken here. Zergling's going to force a lift off on that barracks. And uh, these lings are not going to be able to shut this thing down. Look at the number of cloaks on the way for these wraiths too. So he's going to have to have uh, Overlord's present. He needs to keep those guys alive. There we go. Actually, surrounding and killing that vulture was our friendly neighborhood drones there, which is kind of like you don't want to see them do that. Hydra pops out. Ling gets a couple good shots off there, too. The vulture can get any kills. He's got a kill before he dies, but really not all that effective. Not all that effective as it turns out. Wraith's cruising around, just kind of pacing back and forth, waiting until they have... Actually, do they have cloak? They have cloak. Cloak is done or cancelled at this stage, but again, the creep colonies give you detection as well as the overlords. So I don't know like why you would bother getting cloak here when you your opponent knows, right? Larva knows that's what we're dealing with here. It's gonna be cloaked rates. More and more rates coming on in, and just hiders are pretty darn good anti-air, as it turns out. Although, stacking them here, you can go ahead and stack up this ground attack. It's pretty potent. As it takes just three waves with this number of wraiths, five wraiths to take down an overlord. That's a pretty good trade there. So what's the answer going to be here from Larva? It's going to be Hydra. It's just going to be Hydra, Hydra, all day Hydra. Once he has a critical mass of Hydra, it's going to be really hard to do anything with these wraiths. The creep colony is doing some good stuff here too. Getting some extra shots off from time to time. There we go. They were well placed as well to keep these wraiths as far out as they possibly can. Another vulture trying to sneak on in here. Not going to happen at all and once again just kind of fighting bringing the overlord up it doesn't have speed which is a problem here but that wow that vulture dies oh a wraith dies too way to get picked up there so there's your second gas and has anybody bothered trying to bother knocking that crystal formation down oh maybe you can't maybe that's just decoration I'm trying to remember queen's nest coming in from larva though Another vulture goes down here too, and yeah, really nothing else much going on back home here for Flash. He's got an armory coming in. He's working on wraiths all the time. He's got that control tower. I think that was just for Cloak, which he already has. Doesn't really need it anymore, but you don't really want to get rid of it either. So that factory's gonna die. We are actually done with vultures here. Once again, drones here having to fight. This this, this just feels a little bit slow. Doesn't it? It feels a little bit slow here. I would pull up and say what speed it is, but this feels too fast. Those drones are moving too zippy. All right, I guess we were good. I just second guess myself a lot, you guys. I know, I know. You guys know exactly what the correct speed is here. Just my brain is trying to trick me what it's doing. That is a hive. That is an eight minute hive here out of larva. I'm loving that. Really, really enjoy that. What the what? There's an extractor coming up on the Kadarian crystal formul formulation. Formation. All right. Someone in the comments is going to have to explain that one to me. What the heck is going on with that? Ooh, a queen coming in. Possibly for ensnare. 
I would like Ensnare, but Parasite would be interesting too, because Parasite can't be removed unless a medic uses Restoration. And there's no way I think we're going to see any medics here. Although, I lied. There are barracks in an academy coming up right now from Flash. So I think he's going to be okay with it. I'm trying to kill this hatch for reasons. Again, I don't know what this guy is for. I don't know why you would kill it. But Flash has taken the time to kill it. So it's got to matter on some level. Yep, there's Ensnare. Ensnare's coming up. Double Spire on the way. Mutalisks do pretty darn well against Wraiths. In larger numbers especially, we might even see Devourers, which you don't see a lot of. Although we did end the 3v3 fastest map ever that I cast on Saturday. If you didn't watch that, that one had a lot of great units you don't normally see. So yeah, there we go. Medic's coming in. Stim on the way here too. So we're going into the bio, I think, to deal with the Mutalisks that are definitely in production. There we go. Four of them on the way here. And this is going to die. And I'm just on pins and needles trying to determine... Why? It's just creep spread. This is just performing creep spread, which will now recede because it's gone. I am so confused. Another hatch coming up from Larva. He's sitting at a pretty darn decent 55 supply. It's 86 for Flash, but a lot of this is Wraith, and I just don't know that the Wraiths are going to trade very well with the Mutalisks as they come out. Greater Spire coming in here, too. That would be pretty good against the Bio. There's your sec there's Greater Spire. There's your first Spire working on upgrades. There's Harvesting from the Kadarian Crystal formulation. Extractor. It's very weird. Again, the Wraith's just going to go ahead and try to take down this hatchery over here. We've got some Scourge flying around. Trying to find stuff to kill, but definitely moving back on in to a bio play with a Valkyrie because Valkyries are beautiful against Mutalisks. We don't see these a lot, but when we do, mm, I just love seeing that blue cloud of missiles flying out and causing problems. All right, so Scourge flying on in here. They're trying to find stuff to kill. I don't think they're going to find anything necessarily. But here we go. We've got our drop ships. We've got our wraiths. We've got our Valkyries. 98 to 62 supply. This is looking really terrifying. Whoa, for Flash. All right, so the... Or, yes, from Flash. Larva's in trouble. He's going to get an ensnare down. He gets an ensnare down. Does slow attack speed. Can the Mutas win this battle? It's no. It's too much. Too many Marines. Too many wraiths. 94 to 54 supply. Hiders are coming in piecemeal here. I just don't think drones are getting pulled off the line as well. The Marines don't even have any attack upgrades, but they're still trading exceptionally well. The ensnare does last forever, but still, it doesn't matter. Additional Mutas trying to pop up. Is this going to be enough to hold? But man, the Valkyries are so scary here against the Mutas because they do want to clump up, and clumping up is just murder and suicide against these Valkyries. Oh my gosh, the Mutas. No, not at all. Not going to happen. Lings do get in here and crush a bunch of the Marines. All of the Marines. And the Medics are going to die here, too. Valkyrie does get cr uh, taken down by a Creep Colony. Four Valkyries flying around, but it's 88 to 31. Ah, oh, that Creep Colony died. Oh, boy. That Spore Colony is out. The Scourge are trying to do stuff, but that splash damage is so good. Makes me wonder why we don't see more Valkyries escorting science vessels, because look at this. Well, that might be why, actually. Well, I don't know. They stayed alive, and that's it. Larva's out. It is a, a, it's a bit of a rage quit. <laughs> He's done, and our sneaky two for game number one is complete. So yeah, Flash knew what he was doing. He's going to show up at the dropship with Marines and Medics, Valkyries and Wraiths. And just try to take down the Zerg player before Guardians come out. And he absolutely accomplished his goal. 100%. There was no way we are going to get Guardians out. If, uh, if Larva was trying to get there with all of his Zerg might. Couldn't pull it off. And as a result, our winner today is Flash. So great job by him. We do have one more game ready to go here. So basically, of the games between Flash and Larva that I've cast, I don't want to spoil it though. So I've cast two already. Go back and watch them if you haven't. And... Again, I'll put a link up here if you ask, if you ask in the comments, because I read every comment. I know I say that every time, but I read every comment anyone's ever put into the comments of my videos. So, cool beans, let's check out game number two coming up. Well, actually, before we do that, as to the tradition, let's check out the score, which really should just heavily favor Flash in every possible way. Actually, you know what? Mm, yes. Yes, it did. <laughs> In all of these categories here, resources, you had more gas mine, more minerals mine, more spent. Structure was able to raise some stuff, produce way more units, kill, well actually produced fewer units, but killed way more units as is tradition. And just overall here, man, winning in the score 
every way possible. Flash dominated that game. All right. So one more coming your way. We'll be right back. Ayo, game number two is going to be on Gladiator. Left side is going to be the Teal Terran player Flash. And on the right side here is going to be the Orange Zerg player Larva. Okie doke. So Gladiator is not an island map, which means you cannot rush straight to Mutalisks after Hydrolisks. And I think Larva knows that because he is a much, much br better Bruder player than I am. Flash. Okay, man. You have Larva on the ropes. What are you going to follow up with? Proxy Barracks. Macro style. The world is your oyster. So, Loverlord scouting here. That's an interesting doodad. What the heck is that even supposed to be? It's like a busted egg with some, like, gold down here. And another busted egg. They don't look like eggs. They look like pods. Space pods that have fallen down from the sky. And they're here to explore Gladiator and see what's up. What else do we have? Some weird webbing on the ground. We've got a big old hole. It's fun. The art assets for StarCraft are fun. I'll give you that. Anyway, starting to wall up here. Up here, to, up here is our Terran f player. Terran fan favorite Flash. I think is what I was trying to say. And getting up to... See making, he's making an Overlord here, so nothing too crazy. Are we too... Gonna roll with this for a second. I just... It feels better. I should have checked. I should have checked before I came into this game to see exactly what the speed was. But I think that's it. That last game just felt overall very slow. Very slow paced. Not very slow paced, but just enough slow paced. So there's your hatchery. And yeah, the timing here, I'm just used to having less dead time as I start casting the games. And so I think that explains a lot. The last one is an island app, so the timing goes weird anyway. Where is this drone going? You must be scouting. You must be a scouting drone. But yeah, nothing too crazy. Just walling off at the front with a barracks here is a flash. He's working on a refinery. He's going to deal with some early link pressure if there is going to be any. But guess what? No pool quite yet until now. The pool's on the way, so that means you have forever and a day to wall off. Zergling, I like the drone scout. I really do. I think it's very important to get some worker scouts out here to see exactly what's up. You can do some harassment unless this SCV starts shadowing you immediately the second you show up. But no, absolutely does not. I can complete the wall off with the Terran Supply Depot. That SCV gets stuck outside to sides. I'm going to go ahead and do some worker scouting of my own. And now let's take a look. Let's see, take a look and see what we're seeing out of Flash. Quick factory, perhaps. Maybe an academy. That's what this drone is trying to look for. What's your next tech building, man? It is going to be a factory. So quick factory opening. Likely going to be for some vultures. Which means you just need to be ready for those. Which, again, Flash is going to be prepared for those. Because that's who he is. Zap, zap. Zap, says the SCV, trying to win this battle. And you know, SCVs are the only units that can't regen. So the drone's going to win it. Uh, trying to bait. Trying to bait the drone in there to get surrounded and killed by those SCVs. But Larva is too smart. He's going to sit on the edges here and maybe try to kill some of these dudes until a Marine pops out. And then he's dead. Actually, you know what? He's pretty fast. He is faster than a Marine. He's going to come up and say, okay, so that's a factory. Going to harass this guy a tiny bit. Get shot in the butt. And actually managed to escape. I'm really impressed this drone is alive at this point. If he had just maybe run for it, he would be fine. Actually, you can't run for it because there's a wall up at the front. As it turns out. Is that another command center? Yes, expanding behind it. So after the factory, command center getting constructed by Flash and the natural base location. And the drone does get picked off. Nice job with that. SCV scouting around trying to see is there a second gas being taken? What's the saturation like on the natural base? There is another hatchery coming in. A macro hatch from a larva. And so far, so good here. I mean, he's not really committing to a lot. No Hydralisk then, obviously. No Lair. Is there a Lair? Yep, there's the Lair. Okay, so I was going to say, if you're sitting here on two base for this long, it's probably going to be a Lair. And in fact, it is. Lair on the way. Vultures in production. Starport coming up now, after that natural base has started being constructed. And I don't imagine we'll see Wraiths again. Sometimes we do see Wraith harassment, which can be pretty good. Right? If the, especially if the Zerg player doesn't expect it. And losing a couple drones can really slow them down. But I think we're going to harass mostly with Vultures in this game. Spider Mines in production. Spider Mine upgrade. On the way here. Zergling cruising across the map. Trying to chase down that SCV as this guy. The Jukes, man. The Jukes on this SCV are too good. Vulture does end up saving his bro, though. Two-shotting that dude. No problem. And yeah, the Vultures are faster, too. 
So Sunken Colony done. Sunken Colony is really enough to keep that Vulture from doing much. Another wall. Oop, Hydrolisk Den coming in. That second gas does get taken, so I do feel like maybe we're going to go into some Mutalisks here. That two base second gas, the wall off, the no third against a two basing Terran really tells me we're going to see Mutas. It is a Wraith on the way, though. Oh, I talked about how it wasn't going to be a Wraith, and then Flash was like, you know what? Screw you, man. It's going to be a Wraith. Hydralisk Den is done. The Wraith has a pretty small window in which to get over here and start killing stuff, because Hydras are on the way. It doesn't take that long for them to hatch. There's really nothing else to stop this Wraith from getting stuff done either, as it turns out. But it's pretty zippy. It's going to come right on in. And honestly, what are you going to try to kill? Overlords, I guess. I thought maybe drones, but... That bonus damage, they do a lot of more damage here against air targets. Then the Hydralisk shows up. And one to one, a Wraith will die to a Hydralisk. Gets, gets a kill, though. Great micro on display there from Flash. Going to come in and try to kill some of these drones. Again, that ground attack is just abysmal. I believe it's is it eight. It's eight. And it's slow is the thing. The fire rate is just bot, bot, bot. It's just, yeah, there's so much delay there. Is what it is. So, yep, there's Spire is coming in. Metabolic boost on the way here, too, from a larva. And just continuing to build science vessels. So, science vessels here on the way. Scourge going to have to deal with that. Thank you very much. Irradiate being researched, too. We have an Overlord Scout and stuff. And, yeah, look at this vision that Flash has. He knows exactly where Larva is, where Larva is not. This guy have kills. It's got the one. But taking Hydra shots is not good for your lifespan. And he's forced to get the heck on out of there. So six Mutalisks on the way. Water 88 can really ruin their day, though. Marine count is starting to get a little bit heavy as well. He is making missile turrets now. There we go. In decent positions. Mostly, it looks like mostly the natural. That's getting the coverage. The main base has the two here. So I guess just the two. Just the two per base. That's totally fine. No big deal. Queen's Nest coming in as well. Are we going to go Hive on two bases? Larva, that'd be interesting. It'd be really interesting to see. So, these vultures look like they're going to die. There's the one. And number two. Number two gets picked off. Nicely done. And here come the mutas. But again, prepared for this. There's your irradiate. Goes ahead and actually tries to irradiate the marines with it. It's kind of a nice move, but it dies so fast. It's not actually working out super duper well. Mutas cruising on in. Trying to get shots off. We just got to... Yeah, man, that's missile turrets, that's marines. Another mutalisk gets picked off from distance here. It's just not enough. It's just not enough is what it is. But it is keeping the Terran player Flash on his back foot. It's keeping him from moving out as a third base is coming up there on the minimap for the Zerg player. Now, Flash is just macroing, man. He can't be stopped. He can't be stopped by harassment. He's getting siege. He's getting more science vessels. He's getting more barracks. He's definitely moving into a bio-style play here, getting plus one for his dudes on the ground, and Larva going for the hive, as predicted. Another hatchery on the way. He loves his hatcheries. He loves his Larva. That's why he's called Larva, I think. Look at how well-placed this bunker is. That's amazing. You can't hit any of these buildings with Mutalisk without getting shot at by the bunker. That's fantastic. So, uh, there we go. Spider Mine getting picked out of the ground thanks to the Overlord spotting that one. And yeah, I mean, as long as the longer we can keep Flash contained here, Larva, the better for you, man. Although it sounds like Siege Mode is done. Yes, it is. The Marines are going to have Stim pretty soon. They're going to have plus one attack pretty soon. They're going to have some medics pretty soon. And overall, he's going to have a pretty darn good composition. But the Filer Mound on the way here at eight minutes. This is so fast. Out of Larva right now. Ooh, irradiated. Again, just baiting irradiates out on these mutas. I guess not baiting. Because he doesn't want his guys to get irradiated. But I guess it's better these guys than maybe some of the defilers that are coming out later. If you're going to make the science vessels use their energy. I think he would prefer that they get used uh, elsewhere. Rather than on the defiler casters. Nidus Canal going to be set up between... Where? The natural? Probably. Probably the natural... And the third base up here. Third base is done. Marine tank pushing out for Flash. Flash is... Ah, seven lurkers coming in here too, though. I like the lurker play. I love the defiler play. It's going to be good. It's going to be very, very fast lurker play, fast defiler play. But really, the harassment's been pretty minimal here from Flash. And as a result, Larva's just been able to do pretty much whatever he wants. Tech up fast, get kind of a late third base. But then have the lurkers, have the Dark Swarm. Maybe faster than Flash anticipates it will be there. 
and then suddenly the Marines are going to be in a heck of a lot of trouble because Dark Swarm is not friendly to Marines at all. Where is the Defiler? He's making a Defiler, right? Oh, man. All right, so the Lurkers are up. There's the Irradiate, though. Irradiate on a couple of these dudes. Tank set up here, too. There's the detection. Where is the Defiler? There it is. Defiler. Consume, consume, consume. Okay, so decent hit there. Does take down one of the science vessels. Ling's cruising on in. Four Lurkers get killed almost instantly there. Lurkers forced to reposition themselves because of the split that we have on this army by Flash. There's the consume coming on up. And where's the Dark Swarm? There's the Dark Swarm. It's going to zone them out. Going to zone Flash out. That's about it at this stage right now. Zerglings up there in the top corner of the map. Top left. Looks like they have something in mind, but I don't know exactly what it is. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Science Vessel scouting. Science Vessel. Science Facility scouting it out here too. Marines poking into the Dark Swarm, that's not going to happen at all. And you know what? He's like, all right, so if all your army is defending this, your third base is probably pretty wide open. And by golly, it is. Trying to pick up these reinforcements on the backside, but Flash responds to it, sieging up, killing a bunch of stuff there. Defiler gets irradiated. You got to throw down something now while you still can, Defiler. It's very low. There's a great Dark Swarm up. Does manage to get something done at the very least. Slowing down Flash's push towards the third base. That's why there's a Nidus Canal, though. See, instant transport. Instant transportation across distances. Zerg can bend space-time. Well, just space. There are wormholes, effectively. We talked about that in the Discord server the other day. If you want to join the Discord server, talk to Falcon directly. Other people who love Brood War 2 and StarCraft 2, link in the description to that server. Good, again, a nice Dark Swarm. More radiates coming up on those guys. Another attack coming on down with just Marines. They do have that plus one attack. They're working on plus one infantry armor. It's almost done. Plague is almost done here, too, for the Defilers. But suddenly, it's 115 to 76 supply. Flash is up big time right now. Ah, uh, this base is so unsupported. Tanks setting up just so nobody can escape. Yeah, irradiate on everything that's coming out of that Nidus Canal. Amazing stuff. Burrowing on in to try to save the day inside that Dark Swarm. It does force the army back, but man, it's just not looking good at all. Another Overlord dies. Larva is in so much trouble right now, but he does have the three bases. Oh, and the Scourge actually might get some work done here. No, they don't get any of the Science Vessels. The reaction time by Flash was too good. Too good indeed. So the third base is still alive. As long as that's the case, Larva has a chance. He's got a chance to win this thing. Oh, decent hit, taking out one of the science vessels, but there are still three remaining. Dark Swarm lasts approximately forever. Another Irradiate. Just that Irradiate rush has been so good for Flash right now. 85 to 124 supply. More reinforcing units kind of all over the place. Heading up north. Maybe getting picked off by Marines, but spreading out. Couple Hydralisks dying there too. Lurkers with the spread. Ling's absorbing shots, allowing the Lurkers to do more work, but one does get picked down. There's the Dark Swarm. A little bit late to the party, but it does force flashback. Once again, those Zerglings get cleared out by the attacks along the right side. More Dark Swarm coming up. The Defiler gets irradiated. Is harming. Oh, it actually does consume on the irradiated Defiler, which is kind of genius. Actually, it doesn't have the energy for that. Where did that energy go? I could have sworn that was a consume. Is that not a consume? Again, it's trying to defend his third with Lurkers and Dark Swarm. Pretty good. Not bad here. Getting some spines up on the Lurkers, or on the tanks. They don't do major damage versus tanks, but it's pretty good. Nevertheless, but man, Flash, 131 to 74 supply. He's getting his third base. It has been landed here. The pressure has just been non-stop for the last five minutes or so. Irradiates have been consistent. Scourge have been picked off before they can make contact with those science vessels. It is not looking good. I really think this might be it for Larva. I just don't see him being able to pull through here. The Lings are cruising in. The Dark Swarm is here. Tank does end up going down. Staying in the Dark Swarm as best he can, but the science vessels just cruising in. Pretty much unopposed. Another Irradiate here. There's a single Hydralisk who does manage to take down one of these guys. Which is hilarious. Dark Swarm comes up and Defiler dies there after the irradiation happens. Scourge flying on up, trying to get on top of these science vessels. But the Marines, no! Oh, he turned back and that's it. The rage quit. Out of Larva, another win for Flash there in 14 minutes and 19 seconds. Amazing, amazing, amazing display of just Terran dominance out of Flash. And I saw a comment on a previous video that was basically like, look, man, Terran is not 
is not overpowered in Brood War. It's just that Flash makes them look that way because he's so good at positioning, so good at macro, so good at just not letting any of his science missiles die to Scourge, man. Maybe one got picked off, but otherwise these guys were just mass murderers for this guy, for this Flash guy. Each of them have at least two kills, except maybe this guy who's a slacker. The Marines with 1-1 one, one, really doing a great job staying alive for the most part. There were some lurker hits that did get them. The tanks doing work too. Four, 17 kill tank. Seven kills, four kills. Once the third base got sieged, I think that was the beginning of the end there for Lara. He tried to rush. He tried to rush for Dark Swarm. He tried to rush for Defilers. He got Plague. Not that I think he got any of them off, but it would have been nice. But he just couldn't deal with the Science Vessels. Every single Lurker that popped out of there got irradiated. Every single Defiler that popped out got irradiated too. And that was pretty much it, man. The irradiations really caused major problems. It seemed like every time Flash needed one, his guys had enough energy for it. He just had the sheer number necessary to pretty much consistently toss one out every few seconds so great job by flash never really bothered back home either there was some you to harass but he defended it really admirably and yeah that third base died and that was going to be it so let's check out the final score this is really going to show some flash domination here once again unit structures and resources actually resources favoring larvae he did have that three base that third base up a lot sooner than flash did so that makes a lot of sense more units produced more units lost as is tradition and then resources, yeah, Zerg player, more gas mined, more minerals mined, and actually, you know what? Not as much spent, not as much more spent compared to Flash as I expected. So nice job by Flash, spending his money off of two bases about as well as Larva was able to off of three bases. Interestingly enough, so, hmm, I'm not sure what that says, but it's all good. All right, cool. Well. That is going to be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.